Hey guys, welcome to game three between Do Life and Sabbath. It has been an interesting series thus far. This is going to be on Tau Cross. I actually checked it. <laughs> I again did not check the map before hopping in. Usually that's the first thing I do. I try to ignore the time, look at the map, and then proceed into the replay. This time I actually revealed the maps uh, ahead of time. And yet I'm talking about it, so there's the delay anyway. Anyway, Do Life, upper right hand corner, as the Victory Green Terran, bottom left hand corner. Er, I don't want to call this, I'll call this the 10 o'clock location. 10 o'clock location, we have the pink Terran. Tau Cross is an interesting rampless map. Three player has opportunities for cheese, in my opinion. And we've seen both of these players have a proclivity for interesting early game builds. So I am expecting another interesting wild one. It is possible that one of these guys, if not both of these guys, would opt for more of a macro build, but I'm almost wondering if their mid-game macro play is going to be more of that vulture-heavy thing, which is, again, I've just seen a rise in prominence. And I say rise in prominence, that's mostly watching, like, Artosis's, uh Mars. Uh, Mars is actually in chat right now, which I appreciate, but go check out his stream as well. I get, I like checking out... Uh, this is how I try to stay up-to-date on the meta, since I'm, like, not a ultra-proficient player myself, is, is watch the high-level players uh, and their streams and what's going on there. But I've seen a drastic increase recently and kind of vulture all-ins in the mid-game from Terran players, for whatever reason. Kind of that three-gate, what well, we saw at three-gate, three-factory uh, vulture tank pressure. I'm not sure why that's been a swing recently, but it has been. Do life looking like he, okay, for a second there, I thought he was going to save, but he's going to go ahead and build. <laughs> I like how both these players building these barracks kind of in the corners of their bases. One for scouting information, also to kind of hide it from initial SCV scouts. SCV Scout is moving out for Sabbath initially. It looks like another SCV Scout moving out for Do Life. So kind of doing dual purpose, making sure that the corner of this base didn't have anything building in it. <laughs> Refinery down for both players. So it's mirror builds thus far. The one advantage early is going to go to Sabbath because he's going to go ahead and get this SCV Scout inside his opponent's base where we're going to have, because of the clockwise Scout from Do Life, he's going to end up coming across the base later. And there is going to be initial Marine, so it's possible with some really nice micro that Sabbath might be able to box this off. We do box out. Uh, we do see initial SCVs on gas to go ahead and get that factory, the gas for the factory up a little bit sooner, but then appeal back to single SCV. It suggests we're going to see a faster expansion style build. Same thing has happened, I believe, on the opposite side. I don't know. I didn't get a good look. We do see the factory. So basically mirror builds at this stage of things. SCV trying to harass. It's got an SCV trying to do some harassment while there's not an initial Marine out there. It looks like they're was a skip of a Marine initially on Do Life's part to get that factory down a little bit faster. I don't know that that's going to be significant in the overall build over order. However, that SCV is starting to cycle its way across. And I think they're... I think that SCV is still going to be able to sneak through. That There's that barracks floating across to go ahead and get early scouting information, which is a big indicator that Sabbath is definitely thinking about... Well, we'll see. Sometimes that can be an indicator that he just wants to get eyes out there. He does... Still have that single SCV, so it looks like he's... And he is saving up minerals to do so. This SCV, easily able to get past that Marine. Nothing blockading there. He's going to see that factory. He's going to see... That this is the big critical piece. He's going to see that single SCV on gas. So he knows that it, this is leading to an expansion, potentially. Initial Vulture being produced. SCVs just kind of staring at each other near this natural expansion. Two Marines on the front. This SCV is probably not going to be able to escape with its life. But at the very least... It's going to be able to scout out uh, follow-up information. And Sabbath going to go ahead and take his factory. He's got this initial vulture to provide some defense against kind of the counter vulture that's potentially out there on the field. And do life grabbing his natural expansion a little bit later. So the a small edge going to go to Sabbath as far as when he gets that natural expansion established, mostly because of kind of building timing. But scouting information is going to be in Sabbath's favor, favor because rather than building that second marine, He's gone ahead and scooted out. And I, was that a... I think that might have been an attempt at blockading. I missed it. An engineering base, something along those lines to try to block that front door. Some vultures, two vultures, two marines blocking this front. Second factory being plopped down. No machine shop yet from Do Life. And we do see the SCVs being shuffled right back into that refinery and an armory being planted down as well. Second factory being dropped down for Sabbath. He does have a machine shop. He does have a tank in production and grabbing a third factory. So again, I'm wondering this, if this is going to turn into kind of a factory tank push with this armory. I'm wondering if we're going to see a uh, potential initial Goliath along those lines to kind of try to negate that and kind of do basically 
a, re uh, a recap of game one, more or less. Marine starting to work on that barracks. That barracks trying to flood its way out. It does see the two factories with that machine shop. It does not see the armory in that upper right-hand corner. This is going to put Sabbath... First of all, he's actually behind an SCV. But this is going to put him ahead as far as just like bulky attack units that he can work with with that siege tank. He's moving out. He needs to be... This is kind of one of those interesting things in TVT where potentially the vultures can sneak by uh, the siege tank and whatnot. But if you leave them and abandon them, you're relying on reinforcements to try to deal with that siege tank as it's moving into your natural expansion. One siege tank being built, a goliath being built as well. Speed being upgraded for Sabbath. So he is going to follow this up. I think it's just going to be a single siege tank, uh, some vultures, marines. And actually, now that he's been spotted by this barracks, so initially he was starting to move out with his attack force, but now that that barracks spot him moving out of position, it looks like he's going to go ahead and pull back and rely on vulture speed to kind of press things across. And Goliath trying to poke at this barracks, and actually Sabbath wants to keep this barracks alive. Like it was good for scouting information, but he doesn't want to end up losing it because he's not build all, built all of the factories he wants uh, at this mid game. He's going to go ahead and grab his armory at this stage. Speed Vulture is sneaking around the corner and might catch Dulife out of position because Dulife has the two vultures and siege tanks at the front here. He's got two Goliaths underneath. Mines are not yet upgraded. And kind of an interesting play. I like Sabbath has this single Marine out of position. So is he if he spots it, is he going to sneak? Oh, he's going to be able to get right by. This is causing Dulife to bring those attack forces back. And the Vulture is just feasting on SEVs in the interim. He's going to end up losing that barracks overhead which might slow down a little bit of production down the line, but this is sufficient vultures where you can basically take down any sort of vultures producing out of this natural expansion as long as he focus fires them, and he's getting all sorts of SCV kills in the main. So Sabbath, with a nicely timed attack, catching Dulaif out of position while he was thinking about being aggressive. And Dulaif is essentially, he's in an all-in situation now. All-in situation. He's got... He does have a bulky attack force, though, to follow this up. Two Goliaths out, two siege tanks on the front for Sabbath. But Dulife is just, honestly, this is where I just pull all the SCVs and go. Vultures do not have speed. It looks like he's trying to move his Vultures out a little bit. I don't think they're going to get anything here unless Sabbath essentially donates uh, troops and moves them out of position. Two machine shops down. For Sabbath, he is a little bit... Here's the thing. I would actually even... Yeah, canceling that factory. Here's the thing. Dulife, even with the SCVs he does have at the, this natural expansion, he does not have strong enough production to produce out of four factories. He will in a minute if he can get some more SCVs out. But right now, a big swing. Strong lead for Sabbath. Getting that barracks back down so he can continue to produce uh, factories. Siege Tech is upgrading. And Sabbath can essentially just shell up. Start positioning towards his third base. And play the long game. I like what Dulife did do here. He's like, okay, I'm a little bit hurting for SCVs. Let me just go ahead and pull SCVs out of this refinery. And scrub gas production to go ahead and get that count up again. Another vulture managed to sneak through for Sabbath somehow. Not sure how that happened. The barracks again floating out. It's going to try to spot things coming around. And this is kind of... I don't even know what to commentate here at this stage. This is one of those things where really Sabbath would have to just massively drop the ball to lose this match. All he has to do is sit back macro up, get additional factories down, slow play it, play map control. It looks like some a, hand vo a vulture on vulture fight here to the south. Goliaths moving in. This is where, yeah, Goliaths are uh, wonderful against clearing these mines. Insufficient numbers, so it's kind of a Goliath siege tank force out in the front. And Dulife really has to do something risky and aggressive to come back into it. He's going ahead and grabbing additional factory. 43 SCVs versus the 34 count. So I'm not going to say the game's over because anything can happen in Brood War. But as things stand, Sabbath is, just has a massive lead. And the other thing is, is when you get a grip on Tau Cross, if you were able to establish position, particularly on some of these critical bridge points, I'm not pointing to the bridge points, these critical bridge points across here, and seal your opponent in it as units have to clump up and group and move across the bridges. It's just is devastating. Sabbath playing a little bit of a risk here, moving his army out of position. It looks like he wants to go ahead and peek at that three o'clock base. He's kind of sweeping across and checking a lot of expansions with his entire attack force as he's moving. And he's going to try to approach. It looks like 
he has a single vulture kind of scouting out this attack force as he's coming across but he's going to go ahead and move in and maybe even go for a contain here at the three o'clock mines are going to scout this out engaging right there Oof. and do life getting caught Ooh, nice uh mine drag taking out two siege tanks which will make this a little bit more of a fair fight initially sabbath just donating some goliaths to these forward siege tanks so just and it yeah and with closer reinforcement positions i'm not going to say this was a full flub here but sabbath playing overly aggressive in my opinion where he really did not need to so do life kind of box back into his natural expansion he's got this uh burning barracks to do a little bit of scouting to see if sabbath goes ahead and grabs a third he's going to try to sneak these vultures across kind of interesting these mines aren't firing off um Siege tanks and not on, not on siege. They're going to be able to kill them fairly easily. But the vultures able to sneak through. They might, maybe, as Goliaths come across, they might be able to sneak through, and get a counterattack in. That might be an opportunity. It looks like a starport being built for Do Life. He's also getting vulture speed to follow this up. The vultures still trying to wander out. And this is an interesting play for Sabbath. Sabbath actually taking a natural expansion, or sorry, taking a natural taking an expansion in this bottom left hand corner. Are the vultures going to see it? Do life very close. Some Goliaths and Vultures making their way that direction. Kind of in a catacorny. So you basically have a skeleton force here for Sabbath, denying the third. That's still leaving a lot of these ramp positions open otherwise. I would have, ex I almost feel like it would have been, and Sabbath going for two bases on top of this. This feels really risky. This feels like a huge unnecessary risk, in my opinion, from Sabbath's point of, uh, standpoint. I think he still might be able to get away with it just because he is so far ahead. But essentially what he's doing is, is rather than just grabbing a single base and kind of playing it slow from there, he's actually checking out all these expansions, making sure they're not out, and trying to grab two bases uh, to go two bases up on do life. And in my opinion, in doing so, he, especially knowing that do life is in kind of a, a desperate situation, might have been opening himself up to an opportunity to lose some position, be counterattacked, have too much to defend, uh, things along those lines. Loses control over a potential third base from Do Life. This bottom left hand base is mining. This 12 o'clock and, or sorry, this 11 o'clock base, this 11 o'clock base starting to get established. Here's a critical thing though Sabbath has a 30 supply or about a 20 supply lead at this stage of things. The question is, is how much of that is in siege tanks and also the positioning of it? Right now, Do Life has all of his siege tanks grouped up. In a more defensive space. Now Sabbath regrouping this a bit. Mine's getting cleared out here and there. And here's the thing with Do Life, yeah, positioning around these bridges as long as he has eyes. If Sabbath is being aggressive and trying to go across these bridge points, he's not going to get a lot accomplished there. So pulling back, starports up, four factories. Looks like that barracks was taken out, so trying to establish an additional factory at some point here. We've got Six factories comparatively for Sabbath. He's just got superior production. He does have four bases up and running now. So kind of that window of threat has closed. And Do Life is just now taking his third. So things still well in Sabbath's control. He's still got the overall economic lead. He's got, well, he's got a death grip on economics at this stage. All he has to do is keep macroing up. It's very hard to evict a Terran. And this is... The, Maybe we'll turn into a long-term macro map. It's very hard to evict a turn again with kind of these rich points as long as you kind of hold the north and hold that lower bridge. But do life sneaking an army across, is there enough? And I don't see Sabbath. Okay, he does have an attack force to re-engage as the vulture is able to sneak across. Two siege tanks on the line. The rest of the siege tanks look like they are going to get position here. Keep in mind, Sabbath can just reinforce this massively. And do life going to end up just donating some siege tanks across that 12 o'clock base, it looks like. More reinforcements trying to push up. And now that's growing to a 40 supply lead for Sabbath. So yeah, right now, despite that risk that Sabbath, I think unnecessary risk Sabbath took, it's paying off. He's got four bases up and running. Not extremely saturated at that 12 o'clock, but he's in a good position. He's got a handful of siege tanks. All he has to do is really, yeah, box this corner here and not do this. Ah, oh, losing some free units. 
Honestly, I, th I think he, all he has to do is just make sure that this area is boxed and this area is, and he keeps eyes on this area in case an army was like moving across there. Yeah, just kind of box out. Do life, take the rest of the map. And play from there. And just continue to grow his economy, hit 200, keep the upgrades rolling. I would actually hope to see a second armory here. Has a science facility, he's got a physics lab, interestingly enough. So he's looking to do a quick switch into battle cruisers, but he's also kind of curious with the physics lab right here and dropships being produced. Oftentimes when you see this, you're not seeing... So here's the thing, Sabbath has economic control. He has a supply lead, but he's still trying to be aggressive. He's still going for dropships, still wants to drop on top of Do Life's base, interestingly enough. He's going to go ahead and grab the natural expansion uh, of the third exp uh, third base. And I'm wondering if he's just going to go for vulture drops. Thing is, the Sabbath can do whatever he wants at this stage. He can just kind of, even with these like little forays, he can donate units. Do life. Sneaking back into this, he's actually only 10 supply down. He's actually even on SCVs. He just doesn't have as many mining bases. Able to kill this attack force as it wasn't really cohesive to the south. Vulture's just jumping on top of this. And clearing that out. The other thing with that dropship is his dropships are not attack units. Keep in mind, some Goliaths and Siege Tanks going to now drop on that third. While well, Dulife, a little bit out of position. Siege Tanks making their way back up. Some SCVs getting killed. The tank's not even going to bother sieging to clean this up though. And I'm not sure that was worth it. I don't know that, f what was that, five or six SCVs was worth building two, three dropships, and everything else. I think I might have missed siege tanks to the north there. There's a little bit of a, a pause right there. So, uh, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do the rare thing. Just because I think that was significant. I'm going to pause in the middle of the replay. We're going to back up and look at kind of like the dual attack as it was happening. So there was also this drop up here. No, sorry, I was missing. So I might have gotten it. Looks like he's going to get a handful of SCVs between everything else as well. Kind of keep an eye. So this is... So, yeah. So that drop happening as a distraction. Siege tanks moving up. But here, even... The, here he's attacking the refinery. He's not really getting a lot else. Might get the barracks out of it. But I, I want to get kind of a pure count here. So that's two SCVs. Three SCVs. So three SCVs. And ends up losing kind of the... Siege, maybe four SCVs there. Basically feels like he lost a lot for not a lot. As far as the follow up and these siege tanks clearing up everything, I actually got a little bit lucky on the, the fire rate up there to the north. So pause, pause on pause and continue. But in the interim, Sabbath still has a huge, huge economic lead and a 20 supply lead overall. He's got this 12 o'clock base that's up and running, even though. So actually, let's get the. So the main starting to run out. His natural expansion is still up and running, but he's basically four base versus three base with do life starting to look very, very thin at his main. And more dropships being built. Second starport being added. He's just really going to... So I guess he just wants to just continue with the dropship play. But keep in mind, this is like a lot of supply in dropships. Do life just remaining unseaged and clearing out a lot of this stuff to the south. And now Sabbath, he needs to respond to this as well. Because keep in mind, he has these two bases in the bottom left-hand corner. A couple siege tanks staggered right there. The one advantage he will have with the dropships is that he can kind of you know, drop on these siege tanks, and he also has kind of the, the positional threat as if do life tries to, to press around this southern end, Sabbath can, you know, do more drops at the main, be a little bit more of a, a threat right there. But right now, and maybe he can reinforce more rapidly with those dropships as well, but it's 155 supply to 155 supply. Keep in mind, a significant amount of that supply is in dropships, which are not attack units. And Sabbath is continuing to produce, so this is four, five, six, this is eight dropships right here. He's going to go ahead and try to grab the main of that additional base. If Do Life can press through and clear the siege tank contain with these vultures, or even sneak some vultures around, it looks like he is going to be able to do so. He can get a lot of economic disruption down across all these additional bases, and he is able to do so. Finds, wow, finds that there. Some SEVs are being transferred there in the interim, so vultures are going to try to go in and do what they can. And let's see if he sneaks into the main. He is going to sneak into the main and find that. Actually, is he going to be able to kill this SCV before that even completes? And Sabbath just donating SCVs. So Sabbath, 
Honestly, I feel like he's throwing this match. He was so far ahead. So far ahead. But taking risks, uh, getting a little bit cute with the, the dropships, in my opinion, the big dropship fleet moving out. Maybe he can even things this way, but all of a sudden, Do Life has superior SCV count. He does not have superior mobility. He's about even in supply, but ahead as far as just overall ground army. He does not have the mobility advantage, though. And this is a critical thing. This could be a death blow. Eight dropships moving in towards the main. There's several turrets right there to engage it. Sabbath dropping right on top of this. Siege tanks popping out, sieging immediately. And is this the movement that is going to win Sabbath the game? More dropships moving in. This is, I think, the bulk of Sabbath's army. More siege tanks moving up, trying to re-engage. This is seven siege tanks, a lot of Goliaths to engage. There was a single counter dropship up from Dulife, but it looks like these siege tanks can't even drop or can't even siege before they're getting obliterated. One factory going to get taken out. A lot of infrastructure being peeled out. So Sabbath, with this big drop, might have done it. He's going to have to try to defend this. It looks like... And where's the rest of his army? It looks like the rest of his army is actually just pulling away. And Sabbath cleaning up the rest of these vultures to the bottom left-hand corner. So it looks like Sabbath, despite everything, with that big drop in the main, is going to be able to... I think he's going to be able to finish this out. The vultures from Dulife trying to sneak in. But they're getting cleaned up very, very rapidly. Level 2 weapons, by the way, on Sabbath's uh, troops. And Siege Tanks just, yeah, piecemeal trying to come in, trying to defend this. So this base is silent. This base is getting reestablished. SCV's pulling off the line for Dulife. That's usually an indicator that things are not going well as far as pure defense. Interesting enough, with those SCV kills, Dulife is still ahead two SCVs. But his supply is near half now of Sabbath. So ignore everything I said. I'm like, I don't know about this drop action here. But with that nobility, just getting that Doom Drop right on top of Dulife's space is going to end up sealing this match. Dulife refusing to GG, though. Still producing a lot of siege tanks, trying to get a semblance to defense force, it looks like. Trying to gather a lot of attack force. He's still, he is still mining at the main. He's not main, my, or sorry, at this 3 o'clock base. He is mining out of two bases. Ironically, it's still two bases versus three as far as pure production goes. Able to clear that out. Sieging from this back corner. So still two siege tanks, two Goliaths here. More SCVs pulling off the line. That's going to allow this tank maybe to get in position. Yeah. Level 3 weapons now there for Sabbath. And he actually, with this second round of troops, might be able to clear this out. He still has preserved a good amount of factories. But Sabbath can just easily just kind of A move with a follow-up. Or maybe even just do another gigantic drop. If he still has these dropships, he does. He can just do another gigantic drop in Dulife's main, and Dulife does not have the attack forces to repel that. And it looks like he is grouping up to do exactly that. Science facility kind of floating overhead. Kind of curious what the physics lab was about. Anyway, dropping another huge attack force. A wraith was out there just to explode in the air. And certainly, this will be GG. <coughs> Death blows. They are a thing. Hope you guys enjoyed it. So, Sabbath going to adva advance to the round of eight. We'll see do, li uh, do Life in the loser's bracket. Fun matches between these two. Hope you guys enjoyed it overall. Thanks for listening.